Hi, thanks for joining us for our York Home Live tour of housing services. Um, my name is Matea Jones. I'm a senior here at the University of Arkansas. Um, my major is food science, so we're in our last stretch, the last couple classes before we're done. Um, I'm going to be with you guys today on the housing services segment of this. Uh, we'll talk about uh, cable, Wi-Fi, ResNet, all that kind of stuff, laundry. So if you have questions, please let us know. We would love to answer them if we can. With us today behind the camera is Courtney. I'll let her introduce herself. Good morning, my name is Courtney Soulsby. Um, I'm also a student here at the University of Arkansas. I am about to start my sophomore year as a nursing major and I'm from Fayetteville, so um, feel free to ask us any questions while we show you guys how to do some stuff today. Um, you can comment during the video and we'll be sure to acknowledge anything that you guys want us to. So. Thanks yeah. for watching. All right, so one of the first things that we're gonna talk about um, is cable. So as part of your housing fees, we have cable across campus in our residence halls. So you have a cable box that has HBO and a whole bunch of other HD and regular channels. We get some of the sports channels, especially the SEC network. So you can watch away games from your room. Um, so we'll show you guys how to set that up because we do have the cables included. So you only have to bring the TV. So today we're in Maple Hill East, which is where we're doing this in our little showroom. So if you've been on the tour of the University for Housing, you've probably been in this room. So we're going to show you guys how to set up the cable. So this is the box. It will be somewhere mounted on the wall in your room. Um, it's going to have the cables included on it. So it'll have the HDMI cord, the cables that connect to the thing in the wall. I don't know really what it's called. But it's really easy. All you have to do is plug in your TV's power and then get the HDMI cord, which has a little blue thing on the end, mm -hmm. and then plug it into the TV. Okay, it's on. The power is in. So all you have to do now is turn it on. So. We've kind of already played with it because we wanted to make sure it worked before you guys got here. But ordinarily, when you guys get here, the remote that comes included, and this is what the remote looks like, will not have already be set up. So what you will do is, you know, turn on your TV after with your regular remote, and then you will turn the remote over and follow the instructions on the back. Uh, it's always worked for me. I've never had to use anything else. I'm going to turn down Professor Xavier. Yes, we're <laughs> watching a movie. Um, but yes, so all the instructions to set up the remote to work for the cable box and the TV so that you don't have to use multiple remotes is on the back. It's really easy, really easy to follow. If you have problems, you can always ask one of your RAs, probably because they probably already know how to set it up. So that's a great tool to use. Also, Cox, um, there is a page online. What is it called? I think it's housing.uark.edu. Mm -hmm. Cable. Cable. We're going to look at that here. Just and we'll, we'll show you guys the website so you can know where to go to get that. But there's a like information on how to set things up there as well. Uh, another great tool that we have with these boxes with the Cox is that there's the Cox Contour app that you can download onto your phone. And it's a great way to live stream TV and like movies on your, app, on your phones without having to be in your room. It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a great tool to use. So if you are across campus in the library, want to watch a show, watch a movie that's coming on, you can watch that in the library and not have to come all the way back to your room. Mm -hmm. You get all the live local channels yes, too. Yes, all the live local channels. From some Might of the be good for those streamings. who are, you know, running back from chapter on a Monday. The bachelor's coming on. You're gonna miss a couple minutes. Pull up on your phone as you're walking <laughs> back. It'll be real easy. So uh, one other thing I want to point out on that box up there is there's that other little cord you see with kind of the eye, the little. Oh, yes. Yeah, you see that? Okay. So this is going to be what your remote connects to. So you will have to place this on the wall somewhere. Be very careful about where you choose to place this because where you place it is where it will stay for the rest of the year unless you want to rip it down. And then you will damage the wall and be sad. So be very mindful of that when you place it. I chose to place mine as high up on the wall as I could mm -hmm. so that I could get to it from anywhere in the room. But it's also just depending on like how you set up your box, where you've put, uh, where your TV is in your room, and so forth. Um, but be very mindful of where you place it because it does have a sticky side, and when it sticks, it's not coming off, at least not voluntarily. 
<laughs> There's also a number on here if you have problems. Um, so you can always call that number for, and it's a direct line to Cox for help. And the Cox Contour app is new uh, this year. Yes. We just noticed that a lot of students aren't even setting up TVs. So why not give them access to Everyone's cable? Everyone's live streaming TV now. Yeah. So. so that's what that allows. Yes. Um, another thing that we're going to talk about now is going to be ResNet. So ResNet is the source of your campus Wi-Fi, basically. They are in charge of you know the Wi-Fi on campus, making sure that all this is kind of set up. So they work in tandem with um, Cox to make sure that your cable works. Um, but we'll go ahead online and see that. So you guys know what ResNet is. ResNet is also who you will go to when you, if you have a smart TV that you're bringing with you. You will go to ResNet to have it registered with the university so that it can work properly. Xbox is the thing like that. Yes. Why don't we show the tab on cable just so we can uh, knock cable, that cable, out? Cable, cable, cable. It's on the far left. Okay. So this is going to be the Cox cable page. Um, you can come here for information about it. It will tell you how to set up um, the installation of your cable. It has the listings for all the channels. Um, a troubleshooting guide if you can't figure out how it works, and on-call help. So this is the number you will call if you need help with your cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it Instead has- you have to call out your physical address, so that tells yes. you if you're in whatever hall you are, what address you need to list. They need so, to come out. But yeah, it's really helpful, and it also has like the Greek houses that are on campus and the other buildings that accompany like housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great tool, so it's gonna be um, housing.uark.edu. Um, you can go under Especially forward slash cable. Forward slash Washington. cable, mm -hmm. yes. So it's on the side. So if you go to the campus community page, it's going to be in this little section right here Cox Cable Information. So you can always go there also. But it's a great tool. I highly recommend that you guys use it because if you do have a problem, this is where you're going to get the answer solved. And so along with that is ResNet. So if you need help with that, it's going to be housing.uark.edu forward slash ResNet. ResNet is enough. Yes. This is actually a page that's in development right now, but yes. we're launching it very soon. But we want to show you what it's going to look like. So this is what it's going to look like. You'll be able to register your devices here if you're having problems. The support hours, because they it is a section of how, uh, the university, so they have certain hours. Um, but this is where you can go for help and to register things. And if you have a smart TV, you do have to register the TV in order to use the smart capabilities. Um, so if you need to get online for like Xbox or things like that, you have to register it. And it's gonna have, um, it's gonna be able to show you like what has to happen. Uh, it's a pretty easy process, honestly. You it really is. Log in, I think you have to share maybe an IP number or some, some the, the, the address for your specific device. Yes. But once you've shared that with our network, you're in. Yes. And also, if you need help, again, our RAs are great sort of like tools of information. They probably have set up a TV before, one or two, and so you can always ask them. Um, but this is where your go-to for really information because they're going to know exactly how to help you. Yeah. And, and our resident techs do do house calls. I don't know if I said that. Yes, they that. do. They do make house calls, yeah. If you have a problem with your Wi-Fi, this is also where you will go to like let them know that you don't have a great Wi-Fi in this area, something's wrong, and they can come and evaluate and see how they can best fix that for you. But yeah, but Wi-Fi in these buildings are pretty great. Um, mm -hmm. They went through the last summer and like added more boosters so that um, it was more seamless of uh, your connection throughout the building and across campus. So it's been really great so far. So you guys are in for a good deal. The difference between three years ago, or maybe four years ago on campus, and now is substantial. Yes. When it comes to Wi-Fi access. Even like for my freshman year, like it was, it's so much better now, guys. Um, you can actually like walk across campus and not necessarily lose Wi-Fi, which is really nice. Another great tool that we have is going to be Laundry Alert. If you've watched any of our other um, You Are Home Lives, we've talked about this a little bit. It's our system that helps uh, you keep track of the laundry systems and which ones are in use and which ones aren't. You can set up alerts to let you know like when a washer is going to be free, when it's done, things like that. So I'll show you guys the app that's online because I still have it. Uh, it's still <laughs> Where did you live? I lived in Maple Hill South for two years as an mm -hmm. RA and then HOTS my freshman year. So yeah, I've been here a while. I've used the app I think all three years. It's very useful. So the app is going to look it up. 
I actually don't even know where I keep it anymore. Oh, right here. So this is what the app's gonna look like, the front facing one. Uh, you'll click on it, it's gonna come up as laundry alert. And you can then, I still have my Maple South uh, laundries on here too, but you can go and add um, whatever building that you are in. Uh, uh, you can go ahead and add different sections of east, south or west, because that's where we are right now. Um, so you can add those, go back, and you have the east laundries. So we're on the north side of the building, so the closest laundry is going to be the north side. And you can see which ones are available and which ones aren't. So you can see that all the washers and all the dryers on this side of the building, first, second, third, fourth floor, are all free to be used, which is really nice. So you can then, um, if it was, oh, tracking. So for each laundry room, you can go and select, and... They're all available right now, so you can't put an alert on it because they are all available. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't, if it was in use, you could go and select it and put an alert on it so that it would be here in your tracking. So you could track to see when it would be done, and uh, it will send you an alert saying this laundry machine is done, which is a really nice tool. Highly recommend you guys use it, but you can also do it online. You don't have to use it on your phone. And that website's going to be housing. You work. Uh, forward slash laundry dash, dash alert. alert and this is what it will look like and so it's gonna have all the buildings and all of um, all of campus and all the ones that are available and then the ones that are in use so you can see that there's some in use in Hots and Humphreys um, and Northwest Quad B and then Reed and so you can see which ones are being used and which ones aren't so it's a really great tool so you don't have to lug all your laundry down um, to the laundry room or to whatever one is open. You can just see. But yeah, highly recommend you guys download it when you guys arrive or before you arrive because it's very nice to use. Mm -hmm. um, the next, when they get mail here. Yes. Letters. And so packages. we talked about this a little bit in our other videos, but mail your mail is usually going to either go to a zone desk depending on your building or into your building. Um, and that goes both ways for packages. So for East and West, they share a zone desk. So all of East and West mail goes into one place. So you have your mail and your packages in the same place. Um, for buildings like HOTS, their packages and mail are gonna go to Maple Hill South. For Holcomb Futural, your mail is gonna go to the Quad. Um, it just kinda depends on where you are on campus um, and what building you are in. Um, I would go back and watch those. We talk about it a little bit more if you want to go check to see where your mail is going to be. But another place I can find it too is on the housing website. Yes. Under campus communities, if you click on your specific hall, on the right hand the right hand area yeah. of the page, it'll show you um, where the different halls uh, get their mail. I think it will. So founders, for example, on the right. Yes. Says um, Humphrey Hall handles mail to Founders Hall. Yes, so that's where you will go. Um, so your mail is going to go into a mailbox. Usually, you and your direct roommate are going to share a mailbox, and all your letters will go there. For packages, it will go to a desk. You can either get an email saying that you got a package, and either the key to open the package box that are bigger in the buildings. It's going to be in your mailbox or you'll have to go to the fiscal front desk in order to get the package. Um, the package, the front desk hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 30, I think. 4.30? It says yes. it right on here. 4 30. Say the front yeah, desk 4 p.m. Okay, 4 p.m. Okay. Uh, and they do take, a, you know, they have lunch breaks, so they, there's going to be a lunch in the middle of the day that you won't be able to get packages at. Uh, it just kind of depends on your building. But... During those times is when you can pick up a package. Um, you, the only way that you could be able to pick up a package outside of those hours is in an emergency basis or if the hall admin was gone for more than half a day. And then your RAs would be able to give out packages that evening between 4 and 6 p.m. But that usually never happens, so you're only going to be able to pick up packages between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So if we get like a, a two-day shipping, for example, yes. Amazon Prime, and it arrives at the hall around 5.15. Um, it wouldn't, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't come to the building. Okay. Uh, it would be delayed because no one was gonna be there to sign it in, to take 
action for because the mail room has been locked. Your RAs cannot sign out packages for you without the hall admin there unless given specific instructions because they were gone for more than half a day. And so that's never going to happen. Sorry guys, it's a very rare circumstances. So you're going to have to send your packages accordingly, look at the day. Um, so you know, if you need something that weekend, order at the beginning of the week because two days can really turn into three days depending on when it's delivered, when it gets into Fayetteville. Because after they close, they no longer can take packages. Your RAs cannot sign for packages because that's not their job. It's like a legal thing, it's really intense. They do a lot of training on it, so if they tell you no, they mean no. And it's not to be mean or to like not get your package, it's literally because it's the law. And we want to keep your privacy safe and your packages safe so it gets locked away for its safety. Um, but yes, so you will go, but if you have enough time, it's like 12 o'clock, you get an email that you get a package from housing, not from whatever carrier delivered it. You have to get the email from housing because it has to go through our inventory process to make sure it was received and documented and then sent out to you. You will get an email, you go to the front desk. You can either check your mailbox for the key for the package box or you just go straight to the front desk and say that I got an email for a package. You'll hand them your student ID, you'll sign saying that you are accepting this package and they will give you your package. That's the normal thing. It's really simple, really easy. All you have to have is your student ID. But yes, other than that, that's between 8 and 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Just those times. Monday through Friday. No Saturday, no Sunday. Monday through Friday. <laughs> so sometimes a light bulb will break or, or just you know, no longer yes. work. Or What are some other things that people use fix it for? Do you, you're an artist. Um, yes. So, Say you were naughty and you were playing with your air conditioning button, even though you weren't supposed to be. Um, you can go to housing.uark.edu forward slash fix it and submit a maintenance request for your air conditioning, for your water, your shower's not working, um, that your toilet's not working. That's a great way to use it. There's a big hole in your window screen that was there before, that you didn't make. You can go and have it fixed. Um, if a handle breaks off your dresser, if a drawer in your bathroom breaks, if um, you know if you're in the community style, if something's wrong in the bathroom, something's wrong in the common area, that's a great way to use it. Uh, it's if you see it, you should have it fixed. I know it's a common space, but just go ahead and submit it and just have it fixed for the entire building. And there's no charge to you. No. We're very generous whenever we consider if, if you did if you did it or not and yes. we, we really don't want to charge you for it and we won't um, anything sort of normal wear and tear which we're very generous in how we yes. describe wear and tear I know I um, submitted a couple last year when I lived in south um, I think my shower was acting kind of weird it was like moving around the handle so it was hard to turn it on mm -hmm. and I submitted the maintenance request and Lance is the maintenance guy in south or at least he was last year and he was very nice he came in and fixed it for me and then it got fixed um, there was a drawer that was like sticking and they came and fixed it for me. I had a couple residents whose lights went out and I just I helped them submit a mates request. I had them go to housing.uark.edu forward slash fix it and had them submit a maintenance request to get their lights fixed. It's really simple, really easy. They can do it while you guys are in class, which is why you have to submit it. Your RAs cannot submit maintenance requests for you because that's the thing that your RA gives them permission to enter your room. And that's not we can't we don't have that authority and so your you have to submit your own maintenance requests for them to enter your room to fix it and we won't know if there's an issue unless you tell us yes we um, don't know we should also say that there's a phone number you can call you don't have to use the um fix it form you can also call 575 and so this is what um the housing that you worked in you forward slash fix it is going to look like this is what it, go, what it is. You'll come over here to submit a new request if you have a problem. Um, yes. You will then select the building. So we are in Maple East. And you'll go next. And then you will fill out your name, your phone number, your email address, where you are that needs fixing. So if, I'm not even sure which room number this oh, is. 213. Uh, 113 we're on the yes. first floor uh, so yes so you would come here and you would just yes oh, I think we're on 112 
So this is the bedroom area, so you would submit a request for the bedroom, and then what exactly was broken. Same with the bathroom, you would submit it for the bathroom, what exactly was broken. You submit the request, and you get an email like showing you like what you submitted, and then that it was it's pending review. Um, it will then be looked through by um, our maintenance staff and addressed. They usually very uh, they are very manageable like about time and like what needs fixing, but it's also by priority. So, like someone's broken shower is going to take more priority over a desk drawer. It just kind of depends on what's being submitted at that time and what's emergent, and what's not. Um, but they are very nice about getting in there as fast as possible and fixing it at a time that's not um, inconveniable to you. That's very nice. Uh, there's another group on campus called Facilities Management, and they handle all the buildings except for housing. Don't contact them with housing issues because they're just going to loop you back around to us and you've lost a day or two of, of submitting yes. your request. So come directly to us if it's in our residence. But yeah, the Housing Service Center number that we were talking about is going to be 479-575-7005 um, and that's what you will call in order to get housing if you have an emergent problem mm -hmm. um, but also be mindful about what is emergent and what is not um, if you want you can contact your RA on duty which every building is going to have an RA on duty and they can let you know like yeah this is an emergency yeah this is not it's just a minute maintenance request and that will be it yes. don't call don't contact housing uh, or facilities management because they will be very upset with us. Uh, yes, another great thing about all these buildings is that um, we are very mindful about sustainability here on campus. It's a really big point for housing and it's a really big point for the campus in general. So we make a real effort to make our practices and our buildings as um, sustainable as possible. So we're really into recycling. Please try to recycle as much as possible. Each building is designated with sections for recycling. Um, we have water bottle filters in all the buildings so that we can cut down on the amount of plastic bottle water bottles that are used. You can bring a reusable one. Um, we'll fill it up in the lobby or on the floors depending on your building and just go on with your day. And there's also a couple across campus so you don't necessarily have to buy them when you're all on campus. So really look out for those. Um, I know there's like a couple in the Union, so that's a main center point of campus. Um, and then there's going to be some in the dining halls that are across campus. So really highly recommend that you get a reusable water bottle. It will save your life. I promise. I use one. I think Courtney uses one. Mine's metal, and that's my preference versus wood. Um, but it really doesn't matter. Um, but we highly recommend that you guys use that. There's a recycling contest that happens every spring across the across the residence halls. It's called Recycle Mania. So each hall uh, competes against the other to see who can recycle the most in a scheduled amount of time. Um, I think in the past three years, Walton Hall has won. Um, it's really good for them, uh, but we want all the halls to do well for Recycle Mania. So please, there will be signs, your RAs will talk about it, but we highly recommend you guys recycle as much as possible because it is a, you know, it's our planet, we're trying to save it, but your halls are equipped for it, so please do it. And this fall, we're going to be giving away uh, recycle bags okay. um, in every room. So yes. uh, use that to kind of get all your recycling together and then just take it on down to the place yeah. to, to drop it off. I know we recycle at our house, and it's really not that hard to like just separate your metal and your plastic and your cardboard from the rest of your trash. It takes like two seconds. You don't even have to really think about it if you have the setup for it. So we're going to provide you guys with the setup for it, so all you have to do is bring it downstairs. Um, another thing is make sure that you are using the recycled areas appropriately. Don't leave trash in those areas. We have trash chutes for those um, versus the recycling um, areas. So please try to, try to be nice to our recycling areas and actively try to put things in the correct places so that our um, staff can get through it and recycle it properly for you. One of the things I learned that I was surprised by is one pizza box that has a lot of grease in it can contaminate the whole load. Yes. And so you have to throw away all the other stuff if you just have a greasy pizza box in there. Yes. So. so be mindful of that when you guys are recycling what is you know recyclable and what, what is not. Um, if you have big, don't put cardboard down the trash chute. Can't say that a million times. Don't do it. Um, it's bad for you. It's bad for us because then they have to close the trash chutes and you'll be sad because you have to bring the trash all the way down to the bottom. Um, so, you know, be mindful about what you're putting through the trash chutes 
and what you're putting in your recycling area. Um, yeah, it's really nice. It's really easy to do. But you just have to be mindful, especially at the beginning of the school year, because everyone's getting their stuff in their room, packages are coming in, there's going to be a lot of cardboard, a lot of plastic. Um, just try to put those in the correct areas. During um, movement, we'll have dumpsters too. Obviously. Yes, during movement, there's going to be dumpsters around each area that you can throw trash in and also recycling areas that you can put cardboard in specifically so that we don't have our dumpsters just full of cardboard so that we can recycle that accordingly. So just be mindful and be helpful to the environment. But yes. Another thing we're going to talk about is our CAPS program that are in the residence halls. So we talked about health services a couple days ago. So part of that, our collaboration with Pat Walker Health Center is that there is going to be um, counseling staff in some of the residence halls across campus for in-hall um, help, in-hall counseling. So you don't have to leave your hall. Um, I think it's kind of, some of it is free of charge depending on what it is and who's there as staff. But it's a really great tool. I know there is one here in East. Maple East. There's also going to be one on the south side of campus. I'm not really sure which building that is right now. From my recollection, it was Palm Fruit, but that could have been changed. Um, but it's a great tool. They're very nice people. They're professionals. And then there's also some um, student staff. They follow all the HIPAA guidelines. Um, but it's a really great tool. If you you know are uncomfortable going to the HAPS location at Paul Walker Health Center, you can get some help in your residence hall. So I highly recommend you guys look into that if you have any problems adjusting when you guys get here. It's a great tool to use and very nice. It's very discreet too. Very right? discreet. So if you decide, if you if you see yourself struggling, um, maybe because of all the finals and maybe some of the, some relationship issues that popped up, seek us out. Seek out yeah. those services. Seek out the services. They're here for you. They help here to help you guys, um, and they want to help you guys. Um, another great tool, um, if you are uncomfortable with just going to CAPS, maybe talk to an RA, mm -hmm. talk to a housing staff that can then help you become more comfortable with talking to a CAPS person. Your RAs are very nice people, they've been here, they've been where you are, they've probably experienced some of the things that you've experienced, and they can help you, uh, maybe they don't have to go to the CAPS with you, but they can you know, walk you to Pat Walker, walk you to the in-hall person. Um, and just be there for you. So you're not alone. People are here. They want to help you. Um, if you need help, just ask for it. And that's why we're here at Housing, yes. is to help you um, study, graduate, make friends. We want you guys to be as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. We want you guys to do all the things. We want you to go to class. We want you to study abroad. We want you to get the scholarships. So we're going to try to do everything that we can do um, so that you can do those things. So, you know, talk to people, go to things, get out. Join the community, join clubs, join organizations, um, create a community for yourself, um, and join other communities so that you have a network of support and help here. But always know that housing is always going to be here to help you in any way that we can. So, yeah. Well, like it sounds like we have, we have one more presentation after this. Yes, our next, our last and next one is going to be our move-in presentation. It's going to be August 3rd at 10 o'clock. I believe so. I believe we'll check the calendar. Sure. We'll check for you guys. So if you all your questions about moving can be answered then. We'll talk about some of the routes, some of the things to bring, some of the things not to bring, um, and kind of how it's going to work and how the flow of the day is going to go. Because y'all, for the past year, have been alright. It's a, it's kind of, it can be a hectic day, but you know we are working so hard even now to make sure that it goes as smoothly as possible for you guys when you arrive. So there's a there's a method to the madness. We promise. And we're going to help you guys get through it. It's going to be a great, we're going to have a great move in. Everyone's going to get in into their rooms, have all their stuff. But we look, really look forward to you guys seeing you on August 3rd for our move-in session. Um, but we really look forward to seeing you guys in the fall when you guys move in. So can't wait to see you. Thanks for joining us. You know, if you have more questions, just comment down below. Courtney's going to try to get to more of your questions. Um, but yeah, you can always contact us at housing. Um, for more questions, more problems, but we really look forward to seeing you guys, and thanks for joining us today.